Continuing the conversation here on the Conference Sports Consumer Confidence Index, that came in at 97. That's below the street's 104 estimate. And it's no surprise that investors are feeling less optimistic about the economy as millions of Americans remain frustrated over higher prices and stalling inflation. So with investors' moods starting to sour, what can we expect for the consumer in the months ahead? For more on this, let's bring in Lawrence Sprung, who is the Midland Financial founder and author of Financial Planning Made Personal. He joins us here in studio. Great to have you back on the show with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Brad. Let's dive right in here. I mean, when we think about this this particular reading that we got on consumer confidence and it coming in well shy of the street's estimates here, what does that signal about where consumers are prioritizing their purchasing habits right now? Yeah, so a lot of their feelings, consumers, come from what's going on every day. And a lot of that stems from the gas pump because that's something they see very often. And we've seen prices at the gas pump tick up recently. So essentially, their confidence level has reduced as a result. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, where are you seeing perhaps more prioritization of needs versus wants and, and even the more extreme on the one side, uh, things that perhaps are a little bit more of a, a luxury spend versus something that seems calculated and seems like, okay, I, I want this right now, so I'm just going to get it. Yeah, definitely more so on the services side than the good side. Okay. We're seeing less purchases on the good, more on the services in terms of dining out, travel, experiences. We're seeing more spending in that uh, area than definitely on the good side. You know, it's interesting in the data that came in, particularly they mentioned that with this retreatment further in April, it's reached its lowest level since July 2022 as consumers became less positive about the current labor market situation. There's also going to be a big data for the employment situation as we get towards that monthly jobs report. What do you think that could signal in terms of the wages, in terms of the mix for where jobs are still available as well, that consumers can hang their hat on or whether consumers are going to see a little bit more deterioration of that confidence if we see a lighter print than expected on the employment front. Yeah, I think there's a lot in there, right? I think as long as the labor numbers and the wage growth continues to grow at the pace that we're seeing, that solves a lot of issues. But at the same time, we also have macro events going on. This is an election year, which typically will also make people feel a little bit uneasy until we have some certainty about how that's going to play out. So we have a number of different forces that are at play that are playing with people's confidence. Um, but again, if the labor market stays strong and wage growth continues in the direction we're seeing, counterintuitive to what people are feeling, that should solve all the problems or be uh, a more confident future. Certainly. Uh, we spoke with Alicia Levine, who is the head of investment strategy and equity advisory solutions at BNY Mellon. She spoke about the impact of higher for longer rates for consumers. want to play this for our viewers and we'll get your reaction on the other side as to describe what she mentioned. And what that's going to do is squeeze, squeeze uh, those who have to borrow and squeeze small cap companies that have to borrow to grow and squeeze the lower part of the income scale that uses credit to purchase things. So, and anything, if you need a car loan, obviously mortgages, that's where the squeeze is going on. And the longer it stays at five and a quarter percent on rates, you're just going to start seeing this bifurcation where those who don't have to borrow or those who borrowed long at a fixed rate, whether it's the, on the corporate sector or households with mortgages, are going to do better than those who have to borrow short. And that's, and that's the problem. And in a nutshell, what she's talking about is essentially where at the, the current rate uh, environment that we're at with the Fed at, at five and five and a quarter, essentially, where we could see continued pressure on the consumer that certainly impacts the resiliency narrative that has started to move towards, okay, healthy, and then moved even more so towards, okay, the consumer is stretched right now. Uh, where is it in your estimation, if we were to summarize that? Again, I think if the labor markets and we see the wage growth, that is a counteractive to the uh, increase or higher for longer narrative, right? Because that will battle it. I think the other side of the story is where we don't hear a lot are people who have savings, which savings rates are higher than we've seen in a very long time. They're actually earning interest finally on those deposits. So that's helping also increase 
those savings vehicles along the way, which we have not seen, you know, previous to the last two years in a very long time. Yeah, and just to correct myself, we're at a five and a quarter to five and a half range right now. Of course, the markets are wishing <laughs> that we would get to that five to five correct. and a quarter range that, because that would mean it's finally the delivered cut that many were pricing in over the course of this year that's now been pushed out potentially even into next year based on who you ask. Larry, thanks so much for taking the time here in studio with us. Larry Sprung, who is the Midland financial founder and author of Financial Planning Made Personal, joining us on set.